the news starts with breaking news. We are following several breaking stories this afternoon. Indoor dining is back in Allegheny County. But first, the health department just released an update on coronavirus cases, and they are reporting 240 new cases. Those results are from tests done between June 29th through yesterday. 17 more people have been admitted to hospitals. That is the highest number of hospitalizations we have seen in months. And one additional death has also been reported. Also breaking now, the Allegheny County Health Department has issued new rules more in line with the executive order Governor Wolf issued earlier this week. Starting at 5 tonight, restaurants and bars in Allegheny County can resume dine-in services following the state rule of 25% capacity. There are exceptions for the county. Dine-in and outdoor service at bars, restaurants, and private catered events must shut down at 11 p.m. Takeout sales can continue after that. And when Dr. Bogan and her contact tracers in case investigators find out where were these numbers rising, Hold up. it literally was pinpointed to the bars and restaurants. The nature of the business is just dangerous with this pandemic. Unfortunately, it's the thing that really you got to take the mask off to eat. Outside of the retail food industry, indoor events are still limited to 25 people and outdoor events and gatherings are limited to no more than 50 people. In the past half hour, we learned a former worker at West Penn Hospital has turned himself into police. Investigators say Guy Callie videotaped co-workers. They say they found a small camera taped to a chair inside a unisex bathroom at the hospital in December. Police interviewed five alleged victims. They released this photo of Callie because they say they're concerned there may be more victims. And they're asking anyone who believes they may be a victim to call the district attorney's office. Well, I look downtown from the Channel 11 Tower Cam. Sun and clouds right now and another hot and muggy day. That is going to be the case through the weekend. Meteorologist Jessica Faith has her forecast now at Severe Weather Center 11. Jessica? Yeah, we are looking much better than yesterday. If you can recall yesterday, especially yesterday afternoon and evening. Very stormy. Now we're quiet across the area. Sneak peek of what it looks like outside. And just like Gordon mentioned, a mix of sun and clouds. Some could be seeing more clouds than sun. But we'll continue to clear out as we go throughout the rest of your Friday. Your midday temperatures mostly in the 80s, low to mid 80s 85 degrees in Beaver 82 in Pittsburgh and 82 degrees in uh, Greensburg so as we go throughout your day it's going to get quite warm this weekend's going to get quite hot more details on that in just a little bit all right thanks Jessica White House officials say they are optimistic a coronavirus vaccine will be identified by the fall but experts say the focus right now should be on testing or the country will face an impending disaster NBC's Tom Costello has more on the grim warning. It is the top priority for the nation's medical researchers finding a coronavirus vaccine. Now, Dr. Anthony Fauci with Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg says he's cautiously optimistic a safe and effective vaccine candidate could be identified by the fall. By the time we get to the end of this year, the beginning of calendar year 2021, we may have vaccine one or more candidate that is actually safe and effective. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar is going even further, predicting an approved vaccine could be widely available by the end of the year. We believe it is very credible to, ha to be thinking of the high tens of millions of doses of approved vaccine for use later this year with hundreds of millions of vaccines uh, early next year. But this morning, with the death toll rising, experts warn the U.S. is losing the battle over coronavirus testing. With long lines at pop-up testing sites nationwide, researchers at the Rockefeller Foundation warn America faces an impending disaster if it doesn't dramatically ramp up testing. From four and a half million per week now to 30 million per week by October. And Congress, it says, needs to spend $75 billion to increase testing, including rapid antigen tests, results in 20 minutes. Without this kind of a test, we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Either you shut down the economy and people have experienced significant learning loss, or you keep things open and you lose hundreds of thousands of Americans. Researchers say test results now are taking far too long, sometimes up to two weeks when they should take 48 hours or less. A new report from the medical journal Lancet says test results that take three days or more make it almost impossible to reduce the spread of the virus. The biggest challenge, tracking everyone with whom patients have had contact. 
I'm Tom Costello in Washington. Back to you. State officials have released guidelines for schools to follow when they reopen, but they say the same plan won't work for every district. The state education and health departments are offering guidance to the districts. Masks must be worn by students and staff at school and on the bus with some exceptions. Students should be screened daily for coronavirus symptoms before going to school and social distancing should happen throughout the day. Health experts tell us it will be easier for schools to safely open in areas where there's not a surge of cases, but it could be impossible for schools to reopen in areas where the outbreak is out of control. It's very challenging to even think about having school because you're going to have people that are sick, you're going to have teachers getting sick, you're going to have lots and lots of disruption. Each district will determine whether classes resume in person, remotely, or in a combination. We have a list of all of the recommendations online at WPXI.com, and you can also find them on our WPXI News app. No kids football in East Allegheny. The Youth Football Association says no one is volunteering to coach. Channel 11's Mike Holden has more on the difficult decision to cancel the season. It is a harsh reality, yet another program canceled because of the coronavirus pandemic. Parents told us they are taking absolutely no chances when it comes to their child's safety, and the bleachers, as well as the field, will remain empty. It is a tough blow for the East Allegheny Youth Football Association. Their practice field will remain quiet and bare here in North for Sales this upcoming season. Organizers have been forced to cancel their regularly scheduled youth football program due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, coupled with low registration and a lack of volunteers and staff willing to participate. Just days ago, there was an open call for concession workers, coaches for all three teams, and a COVID-19 representative. But according to a Facebook Facebook post on the league page, quote, speaking with our school district and the number of players that have been registered at this present time and no coaches or volunteers coming forward to help because of the pandemic, EAYFA will not be having a season this year. We hope that in the near future, we are able to all come together and have a strong EAYFA association. Folks in the community say it's a challenging and risky situation. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing anyone can do. If you haven't got the coaches, you haven't got the backing of those district and everything like that, you haven't got anything for the kids. And this afternoon, parents are now working to determine how they will keep their kids busy and safe at the same time. We're now working to get an official response from team officials about the next step in the process for Channel 11 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Reporting in North Versailles, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. Governor Tom Wolf has followed through on his threat to yank COVID-19 funding from a county that defied his shutdown orders. He's withholding $13 million in federal relief money designated for Lebanon County. Republican leaders in the county voted to lift pandemic restrictions back in May. Wolf said these are the consequences for not following the rules. He suggests county residents kick the leaders out of office. The region's congressman believes that Wolf lacks the legal authority to withhold the money. He said lives and livelihoods are at stake. The local Chamber of Commerce believes Wolf's decision unfairly punishes small businesses and nonprofits. Meanwhile, Republicans in the General Assembly are now trying to amend the state constitution. They want to strip future governors of some of their power under emergency declarations. The measure passed the State House and Senate. It needs to pass both chambers one more time before it can go to voters to decide. The move comes after Governor Tom Wolf vetoed resolutions that would have ended the state's disaster declaration. But Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman says the steps taken by the governor will help in the long run. He took some decisive, quick actions early on and, and shut the state down in ways that made sense and minimize the economic harm. But, and, and as it reopened it, we've discovered now that we are now facing a bit of a little, little bit of an uptick and he's being preemptive. Fetterman went on to say that wearing masks now will more quickly stop the spread of the virus and allow businesses to reopen sooner rather than later. Russian hackers are accused of trying to steal COVID-19 vaccine research. It is the same group accused of meddling in the 2016 presidential election. Our Sabrina Marshall has the developing details. Good afternoon. As researchers race to develop a vaccine, a warning of cyber warfare coming from other nations seeking an edge in the global pandemic. 
The three allied governments sending out a joint advisory detailing the activity by the Russian hacking group known as Cozy Bear. They are a familiar culprit, one of the two hacking groups linked to Russian intelligence that has a long history of targeting governmental and private organizations for intelligence edges. The U.S., U.K. and Canadian officials accusing the hackers of trying to steal information about a COVID vaccine from academic health care providers and pharmaceutical companies by exploiting software flaws and using malware. They say no research has been hindered by the attacks, but it's unclear if useful information was stolen. The cybersecurity director for the NSA warned those being targeted to take the threat seriously and apply mitigation efforts. These latest attacks follow a May warning by the three countries of ongoing cyber attacks against organizations involved in the coronavirus response. Russian government officials have denied any involvement in these cyber attacks. Reporting from outside Washington, I'm Serena Marshall, Channel 11 News. Police are looking for the person who killed a man in McKeesport. Keith Jones was found on the ground in Spear Alley at around 10 last night. He died before medics could rush him to the hospital. No one has been arrested. Allegheny County Police are investigating. More breaking news now. Governor Tom Wolf has signed an executive order creating the Pennsylvania State Law Enforcement Citizen Advisory Commission. It will take a closer look at police events and review policies and procedures. Fifteen members will be appointed to the commission by the governor. This came about from concerns raised by residents following the death of George Floyd. Today's the day the Swickley Bridge is shut down around the clock for the next 24 days. PennDOT is doing renovation work there. From Swickley, drivers are being detoured to Interstate 79 to the Neville Island Bridge. From Moon Township, the detour takes drivers from Route 51 to 79 and the Swickley exit. PennDOT says the 24-day closure will save up to six days of closures. A new type of breathalyzer testing for COVID-19. How it gets results in just minutes. I was kind of alarmed, concerned about what was going to happen to our wedding. A local couple forced to cancel their dream wedding. Now they're out thousands of dollars. Love we'll investigates how they can get their money back. They're piling people into that courthouse and crossing their fingers. A local attorney refusing to enter the Allegheny County Courthouse. The precautions, he says, are not being enforced. We're back to the dry weather and conditions are heating up. I'm going to let you know how hot it's going to feel in about six minutes. Every candidate, every voice, every vote matters. From the campaign trail to your backyard, we're talking to the candidates about the big issues and to the voters who will decide the election. Channel 11 News, Decision 2020 coverage you can count on.
You're streaming WPXI now. Channel 11 expands its streaming live newscasts. When other stations are national, Channel 11 News is local right here at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on WPXI now. Nobody can read between the lie like Judge Judy. A COVID-19 testing lab has been set up at a construction site in Beaver County. It's for workers who are building Shell's new ethane cracker plant. Company officials tell Channel 11 any worker showing symptoms will be tested on site and results will come back within hours. 18 workers tested positive since the start of the pandemic, five in the last week. That is less than 1% of their 4,000 workers. Shell temporarily stopped construction in March after workers voiced concerns about safety. They shared these pictures of crowded meetings and unsanitary conditions. Shell made changes requiring temperature checks before every shift and new social distancing. OSHA is looking into concerns raised by employees at the Rivers Casino. As of yesterday, three workers there have tested positive for COVID-19. Several workers reached out to Channel 11 following the casino's reopening because they feared for their health. And they were concerned that CDC guidelines as well as state health department regulations were not being followed. OSHA tells us they have two complaints on file concerning the casino, but would not elaborate on specifics until those cases are closed. An OSHA spokesperson says all complaints are investigated and they'll take the steps needed to address unsafe workplaces. I don't think um, safety precautions are in place in that building. More concerns at the Allegheny County Courthouse. Target 11 has learned that at least five cases of COVID-19 have been traced back to the building. Two court employees and three employees who work in the DA's office were diagnosed. Target 11's Rick Earl spoke with an attorney who was supposed to appear at a hearing but refused. A local defense attorney refusing to go inside the Allegheny County Courthouse after several of his friends who work here came down with the coronavirus. No, there's no way I'm going in that building, not until some changes are made. Defense I'm attorney Joe Horowitz was supposed was to be at a hearing inside the courthouse, but waited outside instead. There's no reason that anybody had to be here today. We could have done this all by video conference. If it was going to get postponed, we could have done it ahead of time. After Horowitz learned two assistant district attorneys he used to work with were in the hospital with COVID-19, one Ross Broman remains in critical condition. He wrote this impassioned plea on Facebook. My friends and colleagues are very sick. Others are frightened in quarantine. This is a real life nightmare. If they had three months to come up with a plan. Their plan was to worry about the bottom line and make no significant changes to protect their employees. Since the courthouse reopened, Horowitz has only gone inside a handful of times. My first client came up from the jail with his mask sort of hanging down like this, um, and they sat him right down next to me in a chair. There were certain judges telling people, it's okay, my, my courtroom's a mask-free courtroom. During a news conference Wednesday afternoon, County Executive Rich Fitzgerald, whose office is in the courthouse, defended the precautions. There's signage all over the, the courthouse. There are markings on the floor where people are to stand. But Fitzgerald added there are seven offices in the courthouse that operate independently. The court administrator said the building has been sanitized and masks and social distancing are mandatory. And more hearings are now being done through video conferencing. Horowitz says it's not enough. There's no ventilation. There's all, too many people in there. And they're all trapped in these little rooms. And once one person gets sick. And Horowitz believes the courthouse should be shut down for two weeks. He says the only way he'll return here is if they enforce both the mask order and the occupancy limit. Rick Earl, Channel 11 News. One week after opening, three workers at Cedar Point in Ohio have tested positive for COVID-19. The park has not said if the workers had contact with guests. Cedar Point is limiting the number of people allowed in the park, and many of its roller, co roller coasters are closed. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Happy Friday. Warm this midday made it into the 80s, 82 degrees. Partly sunny, mix of sunny clouds across the area. Winds out of the northwest at about five miles per hour. So that system that bought, uh, brought rather all of the rain yesterday is moving farther toward the east, and you see that clearing in western Pennsylvania. We're going to continue to clear out that cloud cover, and we are rain free and expect to be that way throughout the rest of the day. So we do see some fluffy cumulus clouds on the satellite, but notice it's sinking toward the south. So some more clearing as we go throughout your day. Expect more rain, rays of sunshine. Not a bad day to maybe go to the pool. Your swimming forecast looks pretty good. Temperatures will continue to heat up. 
with a mix of sun and clouds. Again, more sun than clouds later during the second half of the day later this afternoon and this evening. 88 degrees, getting pretty warm there. And then tonight, dropping temperatures into the 60s, around 67 degrees, a few clouds. And a bit muggy, we're going to see humidity rise as we go throughout the weekend, making the already hot conditions pretty hot. Tomorrow, abundant sunshine and abundant heat. 93 degrees is what we're heating up to. And what we'll notice as we go throughout the next few days is the humidity rising for your Sunday, feeling quite sticky. And then on Monday, very steamy conditions. And this is paired with 90 degree heat. So we know that heat and humidity, not a great mixture because it makes it feel a lot hotter. Here's a look at your heat index or the feels like temperatures, what it will feel like outside. It's going to feel quite hot. So during the afternoon hours around three o'clock around the peak of the daytime heating, we will see heat index values reach near the triple digits, near the century mark. So it could feel like we're at 100 degrees in Pittsburgh, Greensburg, hey, Washington. On Sunday, you could feel like 101. And Butler may be missing the 100s, but still feeling very hot, steamy outside, could feel like 98 degrees. And know that when we go throughout the overnight hours, we will continue to cool down, but it won't take long for that heat to rise back up. Here's a sneak peek at what it could feel like uh, at the beginning of the next work week on Monday. A few uh, locations could feel like 100, most feeling pretty close. Greensburg during the afternoon hours, it could feel like 99 degrees. So we're cranking up the heat going into the next couple of days. So we're keeping things dry this morning. A few isolated showers, but again, I showed you the satellite and radar. We are looking dry for the rest of the day. High pressure builds in, giving us dry conditions on sun or Saturday. Looking good and looking hot. 93 degrees. A few late showers and isolated thunderstorms for Sunday. A few more showers for your Monday, keeping it Pretty hot at 90 degrees, rolling into your Tuesday, increasing the rain coverage, scattered thunderstorms throughout the day, with temperatures also in the 80s at 89 degrees. I have a wedding there. They ruined everything. A local couple fighting for a wedding refund. 11 investigates your rights if your venue cancels on you. And a new type of breathalyzer that can test for COVID-19, how it gets results in minutes. In Severe Weather Center 11, we cover weather everywhere you live. And we have the experience to get it right. We know the weather patterns across our neighborhoods and understand the unique influences on your area. It's why there can be heavy downpours in northern Allegheny County. While it's dry in Greensburg and rain is moving into Irwin. Our priority is to prepare you for the weather in your neighborhood. Count on Severe Weather Team 11 on Channel 11 News. Tracking storms where you live.
severe weather coverage where you live on Channel 11 News. Scientists in Finland are developing a type of coronavirus test that works like a breathalyzer, delivering results in just two minutes. They hope to gather data on the test accuracy, including among asymptomatic patients over the next month. NBC's Willem Marks reports. With people in some states facing long wait times to get results from COVID-19 tests, could a new solution be a test that works like a breathalyzer? It's a lot more efficient. It's uh, almost real time, the results. Uh, it's a lot cheaper and it's a lot more convenient. In Finland, scientists are developing what could be a groundbreaking new approach that delivers results almost immediately. What's the advantage, do you think, of your testing technique? Our biggest uh, benefit is the speed. We can provide almost real-time solution because our turnaround time is just two minutes. Nanosensors inside this breathalyzer detect different gases that our lungs produce, identifying things in our bodies just like a blood test. Over the next month, the company hopes to confirm the gases and their levels that correspond to positive COVID patients, even if they're asymptomatic. Prototypes are shipping across the world to Africa, South America, and last week, San Francisco, to gather more data. A similar technique used in the past developed a successful test for tuberculosis. The hope this could solve a global testing dilemma around COVID-19. There is not, not enough testing capacity to test the mass population in a short time frame. We are opening up that bottleneck. Recent research suggests that breathalyzers are faster, cheaper, and more accurate than swab tests. The company says it'll find out for sure when the trials finish in around four weeks' time. Villa Marks, NBC News. Do you have a good internet hygiene? Why security experts say staying clean online could save you stress and money. We're staying dry for the rest of the day, but rain is not too far away. More details on wet weather that you can run into this weekend in just a little bit. Channel 11 Morning News brings you what's happening now. Indoor dining and drinking is banned for at least another two weeks. What's new and what's next? Kennywood and Sandcastle are ready to open. Count on Channel 11 News every morning.
WPXI Now. When a major story breaks, this is where you'll find 24-hour coverage. From the Channel 11 newsroom to our crews live in the field, we'll bring you the information you need right now. WPXI Now, always on when you want the latest on breaking news. Channel 11 News, 11 at 11. 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. Continuing breaking news coverage, indoor dining is back in Allegheny County. The county health department has issued new rules more in line with the executive order Governor Wolf issued earlier this week. Starting at 5 tonight, restaurants and bars can resume dine-in services following the state rule of 25% capacity. There are exceptions for the county. Dine-in and outdoor service at bars, restaurants, and private catered events must shut down by 11 p.m. Takeout sales can continue after that. And another new addition, the use of tobacco products, including e-cigarettes, is prohibited at all indoor and outdoor dining facilities and at the Rivers Casino. Live look downtown from the Channel 11 Tower Cam. Sun and some clouds right now and a very warm and muggy situation today. That's going to be the case through the weekend. Meteorologist Jessica Faith has the forecast in Severe Weather Center 11. Oh, yeah, we're cranking up the heat today. Temperatures getting into the upper 80s, so on the warm side as we go throughout the rest of your afternoon. This weekend, getting into the 90s. 90s are coming back. And then, as if that wasn't already hot enough, when you factor in the humidity, it will make it feel a lot hotter. We're talking triple digit heat going into your Sunday. But right now, temperatures bearable as you head out and about for your lunchtime hour. 82 degrees in Greensburg, Pittsburgh, uh, 83 in Washington and Beaver on the warm side. Our usual warm spot actually at 84 degrees. I'll have more information on the heat and the next chance you can see some rain all coming up in just a little bit. All right, thanks, Jessica. Should you send your kids back to school in the fall? It's a question on the minds of many parents right now. Medical experts at Johns Hopkins are weighing in on the battle and the debate. Channel 11's Michelle Newell walks us through what it will take to get kids safely back in the classroom. Johns Hopkins health experts believe it's important for students to be in school, but they say there's a lot that should go into place if schools are planning to reopen. As the school season approaches, it's important to know how schools can safely operate during the COVID-19 pandemic. A responsible strategy is we stress uh, starts with making sure the levels of transmission and, and illness in the surrounding community are, are low to start with, and that's going to require continued public health measures. Recommendations to safely reopen K-12 through schools this fall was the main topic of discussion among various experts from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Experts discussed how important it is for children to be in school, but also acknowledged how difficult it could be to reopen open in communities that have a high rate of COVID-19 cases. But in communities where COVID-19 cases are declining or stable, reopening safely is possible. In order to safely reopen schools, communities should give hard thoughts about what businesses and other public venues they allow to open or stay open. Experts say there are schools that might not be able to safely reopen. In communities where the case numbers are um, rapidly increasing, it may not be possible to safely reopen schools until disease transfer transmission is lowered. Can't stress that enough. One of the big takeaways from the discussion is just really how important it is for these schools to closely follow these safety precautions if they do plan on reopening. I'm Michelle Newell for Channel 11 News. Seneca Valley's tentative reopening plan includes a traditional five-day school week with students. Dozens of parents were able to give their input before the plan was revealed. We're told most were in favor of having in-person instruction, but those plans could change. That's what parents say is most frustrating. I would love for my child to go back five days, but it's just the uncertainty of whether, you know, the, the school will shut down again. The district will offer other options, including cyber school and a hybrid model. The safety plan is expected to be approved next week. Prominent Twitter users were hacked this week from Joe Biden to Elon Musk to Apple. NBC's Liz McLaughlin has more about how consumers were duped out of hundreds of thousands of dollars and how to avoid getting scammed. In an unprecedented social media attack, hackers took over high-profile Twitter accounts, posting a scam that urged followers to send Bitcoin, promising double in return. We tracked at least $115,000 that were sent to this bogus account. 
And there is no way to get that money back if you sent it. While Twitter's investigation into what happened is still ongoing, the network tweeted that hackers gained access to Twitter's internal system through a social engineering attack on some employees. When you say somebody is social engineered, what you mean is that they've been tricked into giving up their password. Hackers also use this technique to get access to personal accounts directly. It does give Twitter and the rest of the social media uh, industry a wake-up call. In a scam making the rounds on Instagram now, a compromised account sends this message to its followers. I even used some of your photos, they're right at the top, to lure users to click on a malicious link, which spoofs Instagram's logo and prompts users to enter their password, giving hackers access to more accounts. It is still very important to, to practice good hygiene when it comes to the Internet. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. Good internet hygiene includes double-checking links, enabling the highest level of security features, and including two-factor authentication and having a different and unique password for each login. Parents purposely exposing their kids to COVID-19 to try to build up immunity to the virus. The warning from doctors coming up next. Hi, I'm Lisa Robertson, and we've been bringing you a special version of Local Steals and Deals, where we shine a spotlight on amazing companies and their passionate founders. Small businesses really are the backbone of America, and we need them to thrive now more than ever. With Local Steals and Deals, we bring you exclusive offers from these brands on products that make your life safer, brighter, and more fun at a time when we all really need it. Join us in making a difference. Simply pick up your phone and text USA to 65000 to learn more. Channel 11 Morning News brings you what's happening now. Tonight at midnight, new rules go into effect for Allegheny County bars and restaurants. Indoor dining and drinking is banned for at least another two weeks. What's new? We just got brand new information from that fire scene we've been talking about. And what's next? Kennywood and Sandcastle are ready to open. Everyone is welcome on Monday. The heat index this afternoon, 95 to 100 degrees. Count on Channel 11 News for live coverage every morning. When you want news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. A potential new challenge in the fight against COVID-19. A university in the UK found more than half of all patients had some form of heart damage. The team examined 1,200 ultrasounds and they found abnormal changes to the way the heart pumps blood in 55% of cases. One in seven had severe damage. Andre Tanner says he was at home watching TV when his heart started racing. I couldn't tell if it was a heart attack or if I was having a stroke. I just knew something was wrong and I knew something was going wrong very fast. 
Andre didn't have a heart attack, but doctors discovered two major blood clots in both of his lungs and clots in his legs. They believe it's all COVID-related. Even though you might not have a fever or a cough, Andre says you could be asymptomatic like he was. And he's hoping his story is a wake-up call to others. A warning for parents, don't let your children get infected with the virus on purpose. There are discussions online about encouraging an infected child to play with healthy kids like families used to do before a chicken pox vaccine. The idea is to spread the disease so other kids get it and with COVID to build immunity. It's called a COVID or a Corona mixer. But doctors tell us it is a dangerous move. If your child gets infected, there's no guarantee that that child is now protected against future infection. So uh, on just about every level, the logic behind these COVID mixtures falls apart terribly. Doctors say that while COVID-19 is relatively uncommon in kids, it's unclear whether there's long-term damage for those who are exposed. Just kind of alarmed, concerned about what was gonna happen to our wedding. They were forced to cancel their dream wedding. Now they're out thousands of dollars. Love it investigates how they can get their money back. We'll be dry for today in the next few days, but coming up in about six minutes, I'll let you know the next chance for showers. Channel 11 covers weather everywhere you live. And we have the experience to get it right. We know the unique weather patterns across our neighborhoods. That's why it can be raining in Beaver County. While it's dry in Westmoreland County. Weather coverage you can count on. You're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows. Get the inside scoop on all the hot events, entertainment, and celebrities in and around Pittsburgh every week. Stream Access Pittsburgh on demand anytime on WPXI now. Watch Channel 11 News at 6. Followed by NBC Nightly News at 6.30. Summer is usually peak wedding season, but this year the COVID crisis is making it impossible to have that dream wedding. Instead of tying the knot, many couples are tied up in battles with their wedding venues. 11 Investigates' Angie Moreski looks at what your rights are as a consumer. The summer of COVID is turning dream weddings into nightmares. Many couples find themselves not only without their special day, but in many cases also out thousands of dollars when venues refuse to give them refunds. This is our engagement. We uh, went to Kutakon on vacation. Justin and Nathan have been engaged for almost four years. Mine said, will you marry me? First, a perfectly planned surprise sunset proposal on the beach. And Let me see the look on his face when you, <laughs> you showed him, will you marry me? Yeah, so they... Ah. And now they want their wedding to be just as special. 
The couple chose beautiful Armstrong Farms with its rustic barn turned banquet hall as the venue. I personally went to another wedding at that venue and, and loved it. But their country wedding ran right into the COVID crisis. By early March, their July 4th date in doubt. Kind of alarmed, concerned about what was going to happen to our wedding. They contracted for a three day weekend excursion for 125 people at a cost of $8,500 and already paid 5500 of that. But with COVID restrictions, Restrictions, it's no longer possible. On our wedding day, I don't want to have to be worrying about people wearing masks or if they have a temperature or a cough or whatever it would be. I, I don't. That's the last thing on my mind that I want to worry about. I never get tired of that view. They tried to work out an alternative, but say Armstrong didn't offer acceptable options, so they asked for a refund. The venue refused, leaving them exasperated. I don't want to cancel my wedding and not get a refund. If I cancel my wedding, I'd like a refund, and I also do not want to have a wedding on July 4th for only 25 people. And for $5,500. Like, that's crazy. Who pays $5,500 to have a wedding for 25 people? I can do that in my backyard. We went to Armstrong Farms to find out what they have to say. Thank you for inquiring and, uh, Sir, I don't want to be on camera. Instead, owner Andy Allen sent us a written statement, which said in part, no one is viewing this heartbreaking situation as an opportunity to cheat people. He said his goals are to keep his staff employed, business afloat, and couples as happy and stress-free as possible by providing fair alternatives. But those words ring hollow for Nathan and Justin. I think it's very unfair. I feel like they're just strong arming, arming us. And on, like, why do they have all the power? Not so fast. Consumers have rights too. This is the contract that Justin and Nathan signed with Armstrong. We had a consumer lawyer review it, and he says they might be in a better position than they realize. The way that I read this contract, the consumers have not received what they've paid for because of circumstances beyond their control and beyond the venue's control. Therefore, the only fair and equitable thing is to refund the purchase price paid. These are actually all of our contracts that we had. Every contract lays out the terms for both sides, and even though this one says all payments are non-refundable, Kimmel says that's based on fulfilling those terms. The pandemic makes that impossible, so he says the venue is in breach of contract. The venue is on the hook for all the money that they've agreed to take to provide the service that they can't provide. Justin and Nathan have put their wedding on hold for now and plan to sue Armstrong to get their money back. I told him we no longer want to date in 2021. I don't want to have a wedding there. They've ruined everything. One last thing to be aware of, if your contract has an act of God clause, which covers natural hazards, possibly like a pandemic, that could give the venue more protection to keep your money. It's best really to try and work something out if you can. But if you can't, we'll have more information on our app and website about your legal options. Angie Moreski, 11 Investigates. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Happy Friday and mix of sun and clouds and warming up in a pretty big way, especially when we talk about this weekend. Here's a live look outside. You see the cloud cover out there. A few sun rays flowing in and we do expect even more clearing as we go later into the afternoon and evening hours. Here's your forecast for the rest of the afternoon. Looking warm, warming up into the upper 80s, around 88 degrees, staying rain free. And again, additional clearing. So you are good to do whatever you need to do outside. Maybe you need to cut the grass. You are good to go. Uh, no rain expected. Good to go for tomorrow. High pressure building in. That clears things out in a pretty nice way. But you may want to still take a few breaks for Saturday because it's going to get quite hot. Caution for Sunday and Monday because we will have periods of on and off showers, especially as we go into your Monday. And also it's going to be quite hot as well as we go throughout the next few days. The heat and humidity uh, increasing in a pretty big way. So here's Storm Tracker looking at Sunday. So maybe you want to get your uh, plans done outside, get your grass cut, or even wash your car during the first half of the day. Notice how dry and clear it is, warming things up, and also a system approaching from the west. We'll see just a few showers spark, and not everywhere, just a few isolated showers. So this would be a day that we could have some pop-up showers, and it will be a day that you need to keep your eye to the sky, maybe have your weather app handy so you can use the interactive radar that we have and track those showers that may flow into your area. Could also see some showers during the nighttime hours, hearing the pitter-patter of raindrops as you're trying to sleep. 
sleep during the night into the overnight hours in some spots as well. Even may wake up to a spare shower or two during the morning hours on Monday. Get a bit of cloud cover in place for those, those areas who may stay rain free. And then again, kind of a similar scenario where we'll have on and off showers looking drier though during the second half of the day. So here's your five day forecast. Temperatures rising to the upper 80s around 88 degrees. The humidity can make it feel a few degrees hotter and raising those temperatures back into the 90s for your Saturday. Good bit of sunshine, maybe a few fair weather clouds not blocking the sunshine at all. Really nice day again, just pretty hot back into the 90s. Once again, lower 90s, low to mid 90s for Sunday. And we will continue to raise humidity. As a matter of fact, the humidity will be so high we could make it. It could feel like we're at the century mark. 90s continue for Monday, upper 80s for Tuesday. NASA has released new pictures of the sun. These are the closest pictures ever taken. They were captured by the solar orbiter. NASA hopes the pictures can help scientists learn more about the sun's atmospheric layers, and it could help us understand how it drives space weather near the Earth and throughout the solar system. Uplifting artwork painted on Pittsburgh billboards. The reason the artist says he started the project. Now here's local steals and deals. Hey, Lisa Robertson here with Local Steals and Deals, and here's a question. You ever notice that if you're working out, if you're doing yard work, whatever it happens to be, there are times when you just get overheated and you have to stop even though you'd like to keep going, right? This is a company that you're going to love. It's called Mission. This is instant cooling technology. It was actually founded by world-class athletes back in 2009. So athletes like Serena Williams and Drew Brees and Dwayne Wade. And this is so cool because it's fabric that is proprietary and it's patented. So all you have to do is literally get it wet, wring it out, snap it. Now it's activated. Now it's actually going to change the evaporation process to help keep you cool for hours. So a friend of mine said, well, let's test it. She gave it to her husband who was going out golfing on a crazy hot day. He came home and said, oh my gosh, that really works. And here's the cool thing. You're going to use it for hours. And if you still want more cooling, you just Get it wet, wring it out, snap it, reactivate it, good to go. These are all really lightweight fabrics. Look how fabulous that is. Machine washable, super easy, reactivate as many times as you want, reusable, obviously. This is the gator, by the way. So I showed you the towel, here's the gator. So you can activate this and put it around your neck to keep you cool. You can put it over your head. You can do a million things with it. You can put it over your face. You can even use this dry. If you're saying, hey, I just want to use it when I'm running as a face cover. I just want to use it when I'm running in somewhere as a face cover. Use it wet or dry. So these are the things that you're going to use all the time. And I love the fact that they're lightweight and they're easy. And I love the fact that they're even going to give you sun protection. They're UPF 50 as well. So you can throw them in the washing machine as many times as you want. You can reactivate them as many times as you want. And whatever you do, definitely go to localsteals.com and get them for 20% off right now. Great company, great concept, and patented. Here you going on your vacation, Barney. It's the summer of me. Your TV vacation destination. You going on vacation, Sergeant? Any day away from you, pile, I consider a vacation. The perfect getaway is right at home. What am I going to do this summer? With me, TV. As always, featuring some of the greatest TV shows ever made. Yes, sir. I'm going to lay around home and just take it easy. You can find me TV on Comcast 190, 207, or 1169, and on these and other providers.
sure you know everything happening in the morning. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. A Pittsburgh artist is spreading messages of love, togetherness, and resilience through billboards. Sean uh, Rothel, Rothermel purchased space on 27 billboards. He spent two weeks creating the artwork. He's not an artist by trade. He has a background in finance, but told our trip partners it was a way to express his feelings during the pandemic while also bringing the community together. The Penguins are sending handwritten thank you notes to 66 randomly selected season ticket holders. The team shared this picture of a note signed by Captain Sidney Crosby. The Pens have always been committed to engaging with their fans, and this is just a new way they can keep in touch without contact. The team is in the middle of training at the UPMC Lemieux Sports Complex right now in Cranberry. In two weeks, they're expected to travel to Toronto to resume play. A six-year-old boy in Wyoming is being hailed a hero. Bridger Walker jumped into action when a German Shepherd mix charged toward his four-year-old sister. And while he was shielding her, the dog leaped and latched onto the boy's cheek. He had to get surgery and more than 90 stitches. But it was a pretty brave thing he did. Actor Chris Evans learned of the boy's heroic act. So I read your story. I saw what you did. Now, I'm sure you've heard a lot of this over the last couple days, but let me be the next one to tell you, pal, you're a hero. That's just awesome. This is video of Bridger watching that special message. The Captain America star said he may play a superhero in the movies, but Walker is the real-life hero. Evans is sending the boy an authentic Captain America shield. That's all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast is tonight at 5. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.